On today's show, Ford makes a serious commitment to put autonomous cars on the road. VW executives in South Korea are banned from leaving the country, and heavy truck makers face stricter emission controls. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for August 17th of 2016. Even though naysayers like Ralph Nader say we won't see autonomous cars on the road for another 30 years, Ford announced yesterday that it will have them on the road in five years. Ford is skipping over semi-autonomous cars and going straight to fully autonomous ones like Google. Ford says it can't safely manage the handover when a human driver has to quickly take control of the car in an emergency situation. That's why it's skipping over semi-autonomy. Specifically in 2021, Ford is going to offer SAE Level 4 autonomous cars with no steering wheel or pedals. But these will not be available in showrooms. Instead, they will be used for ride sharing and package delivery. Ford says it will be several years later before customers can buy these as personal cars. Ford also announced that it bought an Israeli company called SIPS that specializes in artificial intelligence and machine vision. It formed an exclusive alliance with a company called Nirenberg Neuroscience that specializes in vision systems, specifically for object and facial recognition. And Ford invested in Velodyne, perhaps the leading supplier of LiDAR. Ford says it's making these investments to to develop its own autonomous system and is not interested in buying a system from someone else. You got that, Google? Boy, if you think the Department of Justice is being tough on Volkswagen, look at what South Korea is doing. Ward's Auto reports that prosecutors in South Korea plan to indict two VW and Audi executives, and a third has been summoned for questioning. They face up to five years in prison and a fine of $27,500. They've also been slapped with a travel ban and can't leave the country without permission. The prosecutors also issued summons for seven more execs in Germany, but haven't heard back yet. We'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. There's been a lot of focus on the CAFE midterm review for passenger cars this year, but the EPA and NHTSA just finalized fuel economy standards for medium and heavy-duty trucks through the 2027 model year. The new rules encourage the adoption of current technologies and the development of new ones to help promote the use of cleaner and more fuel-efficient trucks. The agencies say the changes will result in lowering CO2 emissions by 1.1 billion metric tons and save owners $170 billion in fuel costs and reduce oil consumption by up to 2 billion barrels. They also predict that someone who buys a long-haul truck in 2027 will recoup the cost of the vehicle in less than two years because of the fuel savings. The two agencies also revealed they are finalizing fuel economy and GHG standards for trailers for the first time in order to help cut fuel consumption through aerodynamic improvements. To kick off this weekend's Woodward Dream Cruise, Dodge unveiled two new models with historic names, the Challenger TA and Charger Daytona. The cars get unique hoods, decals, wheels, and the Charger even features LED illuminated TA logos. Upgrades include cold air intakes, Brembo brakes, and active exhaust. And just in case a classic car breaks down during the Dream Cruise, Chevy is there with its Service Rescue Squad, which features ASE-certified technicians. They've been doing this for five years and have serviced over 200 vehicles of all makes and models. If you stall, overheat, or run out of gas, just look for the Rescue Squad. There'll be six Silverados running both ways down Woodward, so it shouldn't take too long to spot one. Coming up next, John's here for You Said It. For the people at Dow, Racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work, Dow. 
And now it's that time of the show where we answer some of your feedback. Jager Tech wrote in to say, God bless the California Air Resources Board. I know many automakers hate them, but seriously, if they weren't around to set these fuel energy standards, then we'd still be driving 1970s tanks and we'd all have lung cancer. Well, you know, I don't think automakers hate the goal of getting clean air. They hate the Byzantine regulations. Those regulations are so huge and so complicated that even the people from the California Air Resources Board have a hard time explaining them in detail. Miss Reb1 has a comment about the hot stamping that we showed you last week. It must be very energy intensive to do this hot stamping. I wonder if carbon fiber is a better option. Well, not from that standpoint it is. Carbon fiber is very energy intensive to make. And Noxycat loved our Autoline After Hours with Justin Fishkin from Local Motors. Oh no, is my car totaled? Yes it is, but we can shred it and make you a new one in 12 hours. I love that guy. And nobody important had this to say about Local Motors 3D printing cars. No doubt this technology is possible. What would stop a traditional manufacturer from doing the same thing? Well, there's nothing to stop them except for walking away from the billions and billions that they've invested in making cars the traditional way. Joe Wilder says, perhaps the big reason truck sales are down is due to all the talk about autonomous technology. They might want to put off that purchase for a bit to see what happens. Well, no. If a trucking company needs a new truck, it needs it now. Now, it might put off a purchase for a year, maybe two, but not five years or more. And it's going to be at least that long before we see autonomous trucks driving across the country with no one behind the wheel. Ted Roberts says, hey guys, can you do a show about that new Nissan motor with variable compression? It seems like a game changer. Well, Ted, we're waiting for Nissan to send us a computer animation of how that system works. And they say we'll get it next month. When they made that announcement, all they provided was a black and white photo of the outside of the engine. And we here at AutoLine Daily want to show you how it works, not just talk about it. And finally, MJB says, I'd like to see the Rivero staged right next to the original Fisker, because from what was shown here, I just don't see any differences whatsoever between the two. And they did that on purpose. Everyone always said that the Fisker Karma was beautiful, but the powertrain was a lump and the build quality was iffy. If the new Karma company fixed that with the Rivero, then it was smart to keep the original stunning styling done by Henrik Fisker. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments and keep them coming. But with this, we have to wrap up today's show. Thanks for watching and remember, you can join us right again here tomorrow.